I would like to start with a case report to demonstrate or illustrate how many surgical procedures MPS2 patients can receive in their life. He is um, born in a healthy German family with two um, healthy siblings. But at the age of three years, he received the first um, surgical procedures like adenoidectomy, tonsillectomy, and T-tube several times. He also suffered from recurrent infections of the upper airways again and again. The diagnosis finally was made by chance. He went to a birthday party at the age of four years and the, one of these children who participated at the birthday party suffered from an hepatitis A. So that's why all these children were sent to a pediatrician for a checkup. And they recognized in him a hepatosplenomegaly, but it was not clear what, uh, what was going on. And they looked for two years to found the diagnosis at the age of six years, or so two years later, that he was suffering from Morbus Hunter. This is when he was six, at the age of six years, and if you see the, the first years, he looks quite normal, but at the age of six years, you see the coarse face. But at the beginning, it's very difficult to find out that this is a patient with a metabolic disease. Between nine and 17 years, he had an inguinal hernia repair, he had to wear glasses, he had severe hip pain, he had a torsion of the testis and a surgery, a mastectomy because of the recurrent infections of the, the ears, he had problems in school with concentration, and um, he left school at the age of 18 years, but a very low level um, certification of school. At the age between 18 and 22 years, he had several T-tube implantations again. He had the femoral head necrosis, the wrist surgery, he had hearing aids, he had an heart involvement, an osteotomy and extraction of seven teeth. He had an umbilical hernia repair, couple tunnel both sides, so everything you know from Hunter patient, he is uh, showing. And he has no mental retardation. So at the age of 24 to 32, he received a hip replacement. Um, they had an anastasia complication because of a tracheal stenosis during surgery, so he received a tracheostomy, which could be removed after three weeks. Then he had an appendectomy, a carpal tunnel decompression on both sides. Um, he had to use a CPAP mask overnight and sometimes over the day he uses some oxygen. So you see in his short life up to 32 years, he had a huge number of uh, surgeries. And now the question is, which of these surgeries are very typical procedures in MPS2? These are listed all surgeries here he received. And if you see the T-tubes, adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy and hernia repair, these are the most frequent and earliest surgical procedures in Hunter patients. So this is earliest sign for MPS2. If you have a child that had hernia repair in combination with recurrent infections of the upper airways and several ENT surgeries, this could lead to the diagnosis or the suspicion at least of MPS2. Also, the couple tunnel release with 18% at the age of 8.7 is a very frequent um, surgery in MPS. Dental surgeries are very often, and also the tracheostomy. The age at first surgical procedure in MPS2, you see here the hernia repair and the ENT procedures are the first surgical procedures in these children, and most of them before the diagnosis is made. So this is something that really can lead to the suspicion of MPS2. Inguinal hernia is not often in children, but it's at least four, uh, up to 4.4%. Since 70% of these inguinal hernias are showing an incarceration, the diagnosis of an inguinal hernia in a child leads to an urgent surgical repair. And 50%, so much more than the normal population um, of MPS2 patients show an inguinal hernia repair up to the age of three years. Umbilical hernia is very frequent in, um, in hunter patients as well. The prevalence altogether in the population is 3%, but we have a huge number of umbilical hernias in hunter patients. Don't perform any surgeries immediately because First, the, the tissue of hunter patients is very soft, so if you, you try to close the hernia, it will come back um, very soon, I think. Or you wait until the, the patient is in an adult situation, so he's not growing up anymore, and then you can put a kind of net inside.
So hernia are the most frequent surgeries, and the second very um, frequent surgery or most um, frequent surgery in MPS2 are the ENT surgeries. You have in hunter patients the problems of the ear, you have the adenotonsillar hypertrophy, and you have airway problems. These are the major otolaryngological problems in hunter patients. So the otological problems are due to the gag accumulation in the ear and the upper airways, and they have an increased risk of otitis media, and this is the reason the mucus is much more stiff and um, less fluid than um, usual. So they have a lot of fluid behind their eardrums. So you really have to, to check these children and to show whether they need T-tubes, not only to, to hear better, but also to prevent the, the frequent infections. Hunter patients have a mixed hearing loss. So what you have to do is you have to, to, to check these children if they need a hearing aid. Because of the development of a child, it's necessary that they have a good hearing or a better hearing. T-tubes in Hunter patients is in 51% of, of the group. So it's a very high number. The adenoidectomy is another um, very frequent surgical procedure. It's very important because since they have this um, big adenoids in, in their nose, they suffer from a progressive upper airway obstruction, they suffer from sleep apnea, they have recurrent infections, and so the children have a, a less quality of life and a, a lot of um, problems. So adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy should be done very soon if you detect these adenoids. Progressive airway comprises some um, very typical in hunter patients as well. What we have, we have tracheal stenosis because of the, the, the gag deposits in the, the upper airways, you have a trachea like this. So the anesthesia is very um, difficult in these patients and you really need an experienced anesthesiologist who can find the way to make an intubation in that patient, for example. Tracheostomy is 4%, so frequent as well. So the typical and common signs of airway disease in these patients are the obstructive sleep apnea. A lot of children with MPS2 need a CPAP mask overnight after the adenoidectomy and the tonsillectomy, so the obstructive airway narrowing. They have chronic rhinorrhea. They have a hypertrophy of the tonsils and the adenoids, and you have to check that regularly in that patient because they, the adenoids come back. They have upper airway stenosis, so this is important for anesthesia. They have a hearing loss. They have a Sometimes a tracheomalacia, they have a macroglossia, which makes it difficult to, to breathe as well. And they have sometimes frequent pneumonias or other respiratory infections. The airway disease is responsible for about half of all MPS patients' deaths. So this is something you really have to check because it's a life-threatening complication. So what we recommend is to perform an ENT examination at least once a year with an ENT examination with a an, um, pulmonary function test if possible, if the child is old enough or understand what he should do. Sleep studies or polysomnographies are very important in all hunter patients. For sure, the audiologic testings if these patients need hearing aids. And if necessary, if you plan a surgery, a CT scan of the lung or also a bronchoscopy can be useful to detect lowered stenosis. MPS is the most frequent reason for carpal tunnel syndrome in childhood also mucolipidosis. Carpal tunnel syndrome in childhood should always lead to a suspicion of an MPS. In hunter patients, 18% are suffering from a carpal tunnel syndrome at a median age of 8.7. Dental problems are very frequent as well, and especially in the mental retarded hunter patients that are hyperactive, crying, shouting, and sometimes you you have no idea why the patient is so hyperactive or um, crying so much. The, it's always useful to, to check the teeth. First of all, they have dental animal defects, they have cavities, they have dental mal malformation, and the patients have mandibular cysts. These cysts don't need any surgery because they are stable and the surgical procedure is related to a higher anesthesia risk than the benefit these patients have because the cysts usually don't do anything. But if these 
um, get an infection or the patient gets an infection of these cysts, they have for sure severe pain. So if there's any patient with you don't know where the pain comes from and the patient can't tell you, you should uh, check the teeth. And surgical intervention of the teeth is in 14% of hunter patients. So it's quite frequent. 7% of hunter patients need a VP shunt and 2% uh, spine decompression. You have to check this in your multidisciplinary management of the patients because these are life-threatening complications like the pulmonary problem. Here are the numbers to the surgical um, operations. So a median of three operations per patient are um, described um, in the Hunter Outcome Survey. Two operations while undiagnosed. So this is in 57% of all patients you have surgical procedures before a diagnosis is made. The first surgical procedure is in median um, at the age of 2.6. And especially the hernia repair and the ENT intervention, the recurrent ENT um, intervention, or a carpal tunnel syndrome in childhood should lead to the suspicion of an MPS2 patient.